Please be seated. Good morning to you, everyone, and it's good to be back in a family place. Missing, of course, our dear, dear friends, Pastor Lucky and Pastor Damianti. They came all the way to our mud hut where we first began ministry. Long, long, long friendships. Even this visit, I often remember him. Thank you, Lord, for their lives. Thank you, Pastor George and Pastor Christina, for having us back. Today, my topic is, where is God when I hurt? Hurt is one of the commonest human experiences, isn't it? Where is God when I hurt? And when Adam and Eve hurt first in the Garden of Eden, because they mistrusted God, they couldn't, they, they were suggested to them, a wife suggested to them, God did not do all what he could have done. You remember that first deceptive, subtle voice? This comes to kids, this comes to marital partners, this comes in all kinds of relationships. They haven't done, she hasn't done, he hasn't done all what could have been done. So mistrust and hurt are lifelong partners of fallen human life, isn't it? This began in the Garden of Eden, but as it began, God quickly moved in on the scene and did not leave them hurting alone. So Adam's, God came saying, where are you? Where are you? When something goes wrong, what's your tone of voice? Why are you there? Sorry. <laughs> or do you say, where are you? What happened? Shall we practice that? What happened? Where are you? That's how God came, isn't it? He knew where exactly they were, they were hiding. And then Adam whimpered and he said, I am afraid. I am naked. I am hiding. And man has been like that at different, different situations. That I am afraid. I am naked. I am hiding. Those are the first recorded human words in the inspired record. And they are very broken words, isn't it? So from the beginning, God began to heal. Shall we say together, from the beginning, God began to heal. And he is the specialist on these three subjects, fear, shame, and what we have lost. And he's all the time recovering, gathering. We will soon see, for that Jesus came and died and raised not only his physical body, he raised a spiritual body, which is called God's house, God's family, church. Shall we say together, it's a place of grace, grace. safe place, grace. gathering place. Grace. In a world of scattering, division, going apart, separation, he has made a gathering place, and it's also a healing place. We will see the slide a little later. And they have done a little sociological study in that they have found if you do a random selection of three people, of the three people, there would be one, uh, you have needs in your life and no one to meet them. Two, you have hurts to share and no one to listen to them, but it is balanced with you have love to give and no one to receive it. So in that triangle, God has created in the need a resource also that we can share with others. And uh, Genesis 2, 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone, and he brought a helper. So in life, we help each other rather than hurt each other. That's God's, uh, in a place of hurt, shall we say that together? God has put us together that we may help each other and not hurt each other. And here are some uh, uh, some ways in which we find uh, hurt coming to us. Yes, hurt coming to us through sin and we reap consequences, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Glory of God is God's best for us as we keep 
falling short, that's hurt, 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 hurt. And we think we hit rock bottom, but before we got to the rock bottom, God's hand was there. Shall we say thank you, Jesus? We never hit rock bottom. We hit his hand. Shall we give a hand clap for Jesus? And on the cross, we saw those nail pierced hands. When we are falling down, his hand is already picking us up. Uh, while the gospel says repent, while we are sinning, his hand is already turning us around. His hand is already providing us a safe place to come and be healed. So God is active in his world all the time. Shall we say that together? God is active in his world all the time. God is active in my corner all the time. I was born into an atheist family. My father was a well-known rationalist and atheist in his in, their, in, in, in his surrounding. He was a well-known maths teacher. And when I get 98 out of 100 for arithmetic, algebra, or geometry, we had all three, he wants to know what happened to the other two. <laughs> this is true. So that was no pressure to me, because it was a pleasure to get 100 out of 100, but it was a problem for my siblings. Uh, so that's the home I was raised in. And it was an atheistic home, and Sunday morning, our Sunday worship service was washing my father's car, which took us to school. Never went to church on Sunday. That's my background, but thank God, just before entering medical faculty, I came to know Christ. After a heated debate, I was arrogant, conceited, pompous beyond belief. I had all the, all the questions that atheists asked, so I really loved them because I want to have them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, to have a conversation, of course. <laughs> yeah. So they are my friends, because I know all the Marxist questions, secular humanist questions, Charles Darwin, Sigmund Freud, you name them, I have gone through the whole lot. And thank God for Jesus, he is better than all of them. So we, when we sin, we, we feel a shortfall, and then our connivances and contrivances to catch up with the shortfall hurts us again and again, isn't it? You feel the shortfall, and we try to, you know, that effort of jumping and thinking we arrived, and the, and the expense that went for it hurts us again. So in this shortfall, we have hurt, we have humiliation, as Adam said, we have fears, horrors, we have hatred sometimes, blaming other people, and we have hexes. How many hexes did I mention? Yes, you come to church with your brain, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. we, we mentioned five hexes. Uh, hurt, humiliation, uh, horrors and fears, and, and uh, hatred. Hexes is an old English word. It means bad things repeatedly happening, and you don't know why. It comes out of hurt complexes that have gone into our system from different, different parts. Then lack, physical lack, economic lack, causes a lot of hurt. Uh, when parents, spouse, kids, friends fail us or betray us, we feel hurt. Death of loved ones, untimely departing, personal shortfall, when we feel we have lost our goals, lost our focus, lost our value, we are asking all the time, how do, how do I increase value? How do I increase worth? How do I become significant? What is my influence? Recently, I turned 40 plus. <laughs> uh, since I turned 40, I only counted months. So recently, I turned 40 plus 360 months. Did you get the arithmetic? <laughs> 70. And I didn't expect this. I, what, what, I, so what? 70. So I was going to do the same things I have been doing the last decades. Then I midday, for no reason, I felt as if I went... <sighs> so I felt some, something left me, you know? And as if God said, Lalit Mendes, you are 70 now, I have taken cognizance of it, you better take... So I had to package it a little to know how do I deal with my next year? So I'm still packaging it, so I'm experimenting it with you. <laughs> so that's the personal shortfall, unforgiveness, bitterness, then sickness and pain causes a lot of hurt. Sometimes pain goes into our head and the last pain records. You might have heard of a thing called post-traumatic 
stress disorder related to emotional or physical pain, then what happens is hurt always takes you to the past. You are living there. Whereas God wants us to live forward thinking. So actually it's a medical phenomenon from this part of our brain. Would you please mind doing this with me? This is a sort of a medical plus a spiritual exercise. This is called the prefrontal cortex. We think top down, shall we say together, empathic, executive, creative, initiation, navigation, in conclusion, successful, good reward. That's how we are designed for. But when pain hits us, hurt hits us, we start thinking from the bottom of our brain. Actually, there's a bottom to our brain. It's just above our heart palate. That little area is called the amygdala. It's the gallbladder of the brain. Gallbladder of the brain. <laughs> it, it, it regurgitates bitter stuff. It's bitter like gall. So all those bad memories have gone and got stuck there, and we begin to live bottom-up regulation. In any situation, you remember the shortfall. Okay, they celebrated my 70th birthday, okay, but the cake could have been better. <laughs> you get the point? The, but the decor could have been better. Uh, so this is a, uh, you know, I'm catching up on my wife right at the moment here. Yeah. <laughs> So, you, in the best of moments, you might, you might recall this. In the best of moments, without the celebration, you are thinking of the shortfall. So today, we are going to put a stop to this. We will not be bottom up, but we will do top down. Shall we say together, today, today. we will have a spiritual transformation, yeah. not to do bottom up, but to do top down, so that we can have that sense of initiation, Navigation, successful, end reward, well done. And who's saying well done? You're saying well done. It may be a young chap who has studied for 45 minutes. That's the usual study plan. You feel a st a st yeah, study stretch is about 45 minutes. If you want to improve your IQ, you can increase the study stretch little by little. Uh, your brilliance is uh, proportionate to, to your attention span and attention depth and attention intensity, but this is not a digital seminar. This is regular Sunday morning. Lalit Mendes, this is regular Sunday morning. <laughs> this is not a lecture, okay? Yeah. Uh, so we want to keep that sense of initiating every hour and then navigating through whatever you have to navigate through. And you have a sense of well done, successful in conclusion, and a rewarded sense of living. Did you understand that? So we are going to end up with a little psalm that says that God enters into reward with us and recompense with us. We want to do this every day. So before bedtime, you have a time of praise, family prayer time, reconnoitering time, thank you, so that you get ready for good, God-given sleep with your melatonin doing all the good refurbishment in, on the brain and no digital gadgets after 9 p.m., correct? No digital gadgets in the room. Young people, I'm just giving hints to your parents, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that you come into no fighting, you negotiate the science with them. Uh, this is the science, these are not laws, these are real scientific suggestions. So God gives you a good sleep, you wake up in the morning happy, rewarded, ready for God's next day. Uh, so that's how we want to be. A cave of Adulam is a place uh, David got into when Saul was pursuing him and those who were with him were about to stone him to death uh, that just before his breakthrough came. So when my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see, there is none who takes notice of me. Have you been there? No one takes notice of me. I come on Sunday morning, no one greeted me. And you went to so many other places, did you went to Kmart, Target, uh, I forget where I have gone. Uh, <laughs> look, to the, look to the right. Bunnings, of course, look, uh, instantly, they, uh, Bunnings has the best uh, beef pie. Oh <laughs> look to the right and see. <laughs> there is none who takes notice of me. No, 
No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. Did you understand the hurt spirit? Hurt nature goes on saying these things inside me. No one cares for me. That's a lie, isn't it? That's a lie. We don't want to listen to that lie. We don't want to repeat what the lie is saying. Uh, bring me out of this prison. So many psalms bring down in the doldrums, but the psalmist begins to pick up as he thinks his thoughts with God. Psalmist has learned, psalmist learned in his troubles to walk his thoughts with God first when they are bitter, disappointed, frustrated. So this morning we make a, another uh, step forward. Shall we say together, Lord Jesus? I want to walk my thoughts with you first before I do so with my spouse. So when those thoughts, you know, th those thoughts are regurgitating, amygdala, bitter, bottom-up thoughts, you first walk them with God. That's what Psalmist did. Having done that, he comes to uh, self-realization and he's calling upon the Lord, bring me out of prison that I may give thanks to you. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Can we come to that uh, joyful expectation? Lord, you will deal bountifully with me. Because the hurt person is always on a short, short fall. He's on a debt trap. He feels I didn't do enough, and he feels others didn't do enough. You understand the debt trap? I didn't do enough. I don't have enough. I didn't get enough. So this goes on and on in every experience. When it comes to marriage, then children are born. Children are not reciprocating enough. They are not studying enough. Their grades are not good enough. Did you understand that? We don't want to be there. We want to end up on the dawn when we are able to say, the Lord has rewarded me. Bountifully, that's how we will end this uh, little meditation, reflection of the word. Then you need to recognize that hurt has allied spirits, and you begin to care, care. Not only you are hurt, you carry a spirit of hurt. You carry a spirit of injury. You, you have it on your shoulders kind of thing. You have it on your brow, and others begin to feel an aura of hurt around you. So you, you can say that when I get near that person, even I feel glum and gloomy. We don't want to be like that, isn't it? We want to communicate joy. We want to communicate God's goodness, what he has done for us. So let my healing speak rather than my hurt. Shall we say together? Let my healing speak rather than my hurt. Let my forgiveness speak rather than my injustice. Otherwise, we will always address issues as if we are suffering. We, we, we have an overdose of injustice. Of course, we live in a fallen world where God is just and man is unjust. And Karl Marx exploited that divide so that he, Karl Marx used the injustice of the world to make man anti-God. That's why Marxism thrives so much in a world of injustice. So Christ took it all to the cross. We must have a sound apologetic about all these isms, Mark, Freud, Darwin, and so on, yeah. They were my friends, so I know them well. <laughs> I really like them because they are on a course, isn't it? They are on a fight. How many of you like a fight? I don't know you, I really like a fight. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean a good fight of faith, good fight of faith. Good, <laughs> shall we say together, good fight of faith, good fight of faith. Good fight of faith. So the allied spirits that come with hurt are a guarded spirit, defensive spirit. You can check it out, and today we want to come free of all this. A wounded spirit, sometimes a promiscuous spirit, aggressive spirit, acquisitive spirit, the bargain spirit, you know, gathering, <laughs> gathering shampoo, gathering teeth. Uh, G gathering toothpaste as if your tyrannous house wrecks with so many teeth to brush. <laughs> a, a jealous spirit, isolated spirit. You know, so uh, we take care. We don't want to make incidents keep adding up and affecting our personality, isn't it? 
spirit is that our personality has put on a robe and after a while we will say I wasn't like this and we don't want to carry these cloaks veils that are hiding the God given me inside so many veils Christ tore all the veils one by one starting in the inside so I want you to remember now now we are understood the issue now we must move into the solutions as I said in the morning service doctors are into etiology pathogenesis pathology diagnosis and then a two-minute prescription uh, that's not how Christ is etiology is what went wrong pathogenesis is from that first incident that happened to you how that developed into your life patterns and mannerisms did you understand that from the first incident that's the way it works into your system and even your health can be affected pathology is the end result of how you feel in your moods in your personality in your emotions now doctors do with organs physical organs but spiritually also there are organelles and other things that are acting in us reacting to the hurts that have gone through in our life uh, so we want to think of Jesus his body was mangled thorns thistles dust contusions lacerations hurt insults injury all of Eden plus plus 4,000 years of it came on Christ on the cross give me a way if you understood that and he was in the tomb having gone to the cross now he was in the tomb his body was in the tomb then comes resurrection morning and the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will you say with me spirit of life in Christ Jesus descended into his body and every laceration wound was healed from the inside out human spirit human soul human body healed in Jesus shall we say together human spirit human soul human body healed in Jesus and then the wrappings the bandages the grave clothes you remember embalmed with aloe and myrrh aloe and myrrh yeah you know when you when you forget something some I tap my head some people bite their fingernails some people for very grave issues bite their toenails then memory comes yeah <laughs> Let's just, don't try it but you know uh, so his spirit came into his body and the body was healed there were only few stigma left just to saw uh, just to show doubting Thomas then all the bandages came out you remember Peter and John ran together and they peeped into the grave rock had already rolled and there were only bandage cloths and out of the bandages he came and the cave that incarcerated his body with human sin human disappointed the rock rolled the cave gave way and the guards fell off you remember the Roman guards the watch the seal the stone they fell off but when you approach a person you first approach from outside you see guards growling Grrr. sometimes they are spirits what happened to them you are trying to minister to someone there's growling guards that are putting you off don't get put off we have a mission with Christ we are hurt so heal that we may heal others you understand and there are cages and stones that put people have put up it's only a put up because they are hurt they, they feel afraid they feel naked they feel vulnerable they feel shame they are hiding behind different stones you understand my allegory and they move off but then you have to get that person healed for all this we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit gifts of the Holy Spirit so Christ begins the healing from inside if we try to approach from outside there are gods demonic gods keeping watch over a damaged wounded person if Christ comes into those people they will throw off the gods. shall we give a hand clap to Jesus they will throw off the gods and the bandages will come off if we try to remove their defenses they will be offended we are making their hurt worse isn't it because they're all caked with pus and wounds can't remove bandages like that 
but when healed within, shall we say together, when healed within by Christ, our facades come off, our bandages come off, our protective devices come off. Even the digital screen and the digital gadget is a protective device. Do you understand that? Kids recede, retreat into that digital dungeon and they need to be healed of it to come out. This is my specialist subject. I have some books there. Screen smart for parents to read with young people. Read the science and then they understand. Don't fight them. Tell, your name, t tell yourself, I will not fight my kid on the digital screen. They need to understand the science. They need help. That's where they withdraw. So don't pull them out. It doesn't work. Offer them better than the screen. Dad, you are the hero. Isn't it? You are the hero. They are looking for heroics and they are trying to get it from the screen. Dad, you are the hero. Mom makes it daily safe. Good food, caramel pudding, cake. I'm just telling you what I like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but when there is an issue, Dad has to come in. Give me a wave on this, please. Yes. When, when boundaries are violated, when invasions are there, he's the hero. He's the champ who, who will ward them off. He has to be involved. Yes. Very quick, very quickly, I need to get to Hebrews 5, 7 to 9. In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplication with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. He was heard because of his piety. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. Having been made, he became to all who obey the source of eternal salvation. Shall we say together, source of eternal salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53, 3. Let's see whether we have gone through these experiences. He was despised and rejected by men. So all that, what we feel, he has gone through. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Hebrew has pain in that grief. As one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised. We esteemed him not. Have you been there? You felt for what I am capable of, I am not esteemed. Surely our griefs he himself bore, our sorrows he carried, yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was pierced through for our transgression, he was crucified for our iniquities, the chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I have a graphic on the cross there, hurt to healing as we go through the cross, as we go through Calvary. Hatred to forgiveness. Rejection to acceptance. Alienation to reconciliation. Curse to blessing. Shall we say thank you, Jesus? Thank you for the cross. Let's say this together. No more reaction. I want to move to reconciliation. Can you think of someone about whom you are saying this? One more time for repetition. No more reaction. I move to reconciliation. No more regurgitation. That is bringing out the old bad things. I move to restoration. Releasing. I release those things. No more revenge. I move to redemption. So from those bad hours, we move to the Jesus ones. Restoration, then no more rejection. Because hurt rejects lest they reject, lest they hurt us more. So we don't want to touch the people with the long end of a barge pole. Do you still use that English here? This is about you know the, the port, the harbor. They used to maneuver those boats with a long pole, barges. They were called barge pole. So you deal with the person with the long end of a... You get the point here. That's, that was the idea. Uh, no, we don't move to rejection. We it isolate us. It hurts us. And God has provided a grace place, safe place, gathering place, healing place called the 
body of Christ, the church, the Father's house, the family. Amen? That's why we are here. More we are together, better it is together. Then we le- the, the scattering effects on our life is removed by the drawing effects of Jesus, the best he has for us. Yes. Alienation to reconciliation curse to blessing. Isaiah 61, 1 to 2. This was Jesus' mission, Spirit of, the, Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And poverty is defined there. Sent me to, so we are anointed, appointed, and we are sent with apostolic authority. Just like Jesus, apostol, who were sent as a special delegate because we had hurt, we are now healed. We had fear, now we are loved. The remedy for fear is not faith. If you tell a person who is afraid of a disease or a situation, have faith, they will get more fearful. So what covers fear? Perfect faith cast out fear? No, scripture didn't say that. 1 John 4, 17, perfect love casts out fear. So speak love, then faith will come. Shall we say together? Speak love, faith will come. Speak faith, they get more fearful. We have faith, they think, I have to do it. Moment you say love, you know God has to do it. That's how hurts are healed. You can face up situations that brought fear to you without fear because of the embrace of love. Shall we say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, so Isaiah 61, bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. What is scattered, he has bound together. Proclaim liberty to the captives opening up the prison to those who are bound. So some are captives from within, some are captives from without. Both are released by the word of the gospel to proclaim the year of the Lord's acceptance. Then uh, what do I become there for? What is church? It's a grace place. It's a grace place because of God's grace, a safe place to belong believe and become so we all come with shortfall we belong together and we are believing together and we watch from day one how people's lives are changed amen how people's life are changed in in our colombo church we have those who have walked with us for 30 years together as uh, pastor george was saying about our relationship similarly in colombo they have walked with us together. From small positions, they became CEOs of some of the largest companies in Sri Lanka while they walked in faith together. That's how our church was built from a mud hut to quite a sufficient auditorium in Colombo and 45 other assemblies, uh, plus helping orphans. I must tell this story quickly. We have a boy who's a six foot strapper now. His name is Johan Awanka. He came to us when he was three months old to Hiranti's orphanage, Rainbow Home, which your church has sponsored and helped for how many decades now? And this boy had no father, no mother. He never knew. We only got the baby. And then when he was about seven years old, he had an arm dislocation and he had, was admitted to the children's hospital. So from morning, my wife was saying, go and see, go and see. But you know, apostles have more important things than see orphans, correct? <laughs> I didn't think like that, but the day wore out at about nine, at about 8.30 in the night, she said, you haven't still gone and seen. So I said, I'll go. And I went in my big, you know, I'm a medical person, I can go to hospital at any time, this kind of mentality. I went in this little fellow's bed. I touched his arm, his injured arm. He thought she had come. He looked up and saw this monster. He turned away and cried because I had no relationship with him. I learned my lesson that day, that a little infant boy with father and mother, without father and mother, looks for love, knows love, and he sees a very competent person. He doesn't know my medical competence. He was only looking for her, who had cared for her all her life, all his life. Thank God. He's six foot tall strapper. He's a cricketer now, 
good in his studies. He's still in our orphanage. He's 15 years old, and recently he was awarded the best bowler's prize island-wide in the uh, school competition under 17. Shall we give a hand clap to Jesus? <laughs> what a little bit of love consistently can do to anyone, isn't it? We are very proud of him. He, 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 he has no other home. This is his home. And when you see him, he looks as if he's an aristocratic chap. We, I always felt his father had a one-night stand with an unfortunate lady, but his father must have been a fellow with, you know, a uh, fellow with ability and affluence, though his son, now we are looking after. world is like that, but church is a grace place, so don't blame the world, be the church. Will you tell that to your neighbor? Don't blame the world, be the church, which is a grace place, safe place, gathering place, healing place. That's just one story, but thank God for Jesus. So this is what the church is there for, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor for everybody. And finally, this is, our, this is our healing mandate from Isaiah uh, 50, Isaiah uh, 61, 3 and 4, to grant those who mourn in Zion. We are appointed, assigned, and sent forth with the same Jesus authority to give them a garland instead of ashes. Actually, this is a tiara of a bride in joy and expectation. Oil of gladness instead of mourning. Now, we have heard this scripture, but today for me, uh, for us, this is equipment for healing, which with the Lord sends us. Oil of gladness instead of mourning. Where is this happening? In the grace place, safe place, gathering place, church gathers all kinds, and the healing place, correct? Yes, and so they will be called oaks praise instead of a spirit of fainting. They will be called oaks of righteousness, planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They will rebuild the ancient rings, they will raise up former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities, desolations of many generations. God is into a multi-generational build-up because the world got accelerated with all the COVID trouble and shutdown. Now the 25-year-olds want their space, 30-year-olds want their space, 40-year-old fellows always had their space, and the 70-year-olds had their world. We were the boomers, isn't it? Now four generations have to do church together. Church has to get ready for that. Even the 18-year-olds are saying, we also have short time. We need our space. And Christ can do this for all. I want to call uh, Dr. Jahan to come and lead us in an altar call. A four-generational world where we do things together because church is a grace place, safe place, gathering place for all generations, and a healing place.